Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 17 full tutorial series for absolute beginners as well as expert developers joining us from previous versions of Angular. There are a lot of changes in Angular 17 that every developer, be it new or someone who is trying to upgrade their knowledge, needs to know. One such topic and one such feature in Angular 17 is called lazy loading component. So far in Angular 6 till 16, you might have heard about lazy loading modules. I have covered that in the previous part. If you have missed that, make sure that you go through that. So lazy loading module is nothing but a module which will be loaded only when that route is loaded or whenever it is loaded on demand. Same way we can implement that strategy for lazy loading component as well. If you want to load a particular component which is standalone and want to map it to a route, you can still do that in Angular 17. Let's go ahead and learn how to do that in our hands-on. But before that, if you have missed out on the first 21 episodes, make sure that you go through this entire tutorial playlist. This will be a hundred plus uh, episodes that I'm planning to cover everything about Angular 17 in detail. So you don't want to miss them. So make sure that you go through the previous episodes. All right. So now today we are talking about lazy loading component. Lazy loading is a technique in Angular that allows components to be loaded on demand improving the application's performance only by loading the components when they are called. Now this can be applied to both. It can be for a normal regular component which is not standalone or it can be for something which is standalone. So when you say ng generate component in Angular 17, since standalone is enabled by default, this component will be standalone. This will be false. And how do you do that? You can just add load component and give the map map the component just like how we were doing for the module. I'm going to show you in hands on. But before that, I'm going to continue where we left in the previous episode. So make sure that you go through that. I am in app routes.ts file. There is no app module in Angular 17. Remember that I keep saying it. I know I'm repetitive, but that's for you to understand. This is what we did in the last episode to load a lazy loading module. We wrote the line load children, import the module and then map the admin module routes. OK, now as part of that, we also created an admin module. And we created a routing file for it. We added a route and we created two components, add user and edit user. Add user is a standalone component, which is standalone is true. And edit user is a normal component, which is not standalone, right? Now I'm going to use this component add user, which is a standalone component. You can use any component that we have generated so far for your learning purpose. So open the app routes.ts. Now in this, what we'll do, we'll create a new route. So curly brace open, curly brace closed, then write the path and say add user. Now here we can be used to directly map like this component, right? Now this becomes a regular component because it will be loaded not on load, but it will be loaded always. We don't want that. We want this to be a lazy loading component, which means load only when that is called and can also map it. So we are going to use an option called load component colon and then same way how we did for lazy loading module, right? Add user slash component dot then C, which is short for add user component. <clears throat> All right. So take a look at these two lines. This is how you do a lazy loading module and you load the children when this route is called, which is admin. Same way, if you want to load a standalone component, you can use load component and pass this. All right. Now let's fire up our browser. And I will show you both variations of it. All right. Let's do localhost. Now you see we are not seeing the component loaded here. And you can see I'll refresh and see the chunk. 
I see only four. So now do add user, which is what we configured a route. Now you see add user component is loaded as part of the new chunk, right? But if you go to a regular normal route, you will not see that loaded. Okay. Now the same way we can keep on adding any number of details. Now I'm going to comment this line and add component, add user component from admin. All right. Now you can see here, add user and you don't see the chunk included. You, you will not see that, right? Because it is part of the build now. Okay. It's always compiled. It's always loaded and hence it's available, but it is not a lazy loading more component anymore. Okay. But if you do this, this chunk will only be included in the code when it is a lazy loading component. I'll show you the difference one more time. I am now enabling it as a regular component, add user component. You would not see the difference, but you will see the output as same. See, the component is included. You can see here the output is add user works, which is coming from add admin. So I'm going to change here and say <coughs> not a lazy loading component right now. All right, so see not a lazy loading module. You don't see the chunk because it's part of this chunk already and it will be loaded. But if you want it as a lazy loading module, in the app routes, you will need to enable it as a load component and you can now see the new extra chunk of JS loaded only for this route. Okay, that's the main difference. You can see here the output is also coming. Right. So on high level, now we have learned what is a module, what is a component, how to generate a component, how to generate a module, how to generate a standalone component, how to generate a lazy loading module with routing. We have also seen how to map a lazy loading module into the app routes.ts. We have seen how to include a lazy loading component inside app routes.ts. All right. So that covers the basic fundamentals that you need before you start learning Angular. Because in the next episode onwards, we'll talk about the general features of Angular to bind data, which covers under data binding. I hope you're enjoying this series. I hope you're learning. Please do write to me if you have any doubts. I know there are a lot of changes in Angular 17. I will try and cover every single detail uh, feature. All right. And thank you so much for showing your love to this series. I'm really enjoying creating this for you. If you do, please do like, share and subscribe and show your love to me. Thank you so much. In the next episode, I will start with Angular 17 data binding. We'll continue the series and we'll try and build an app out of it. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.